Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is Video Revealed, your place for professional video production techniques. Thanks to Lokas Marciniak from Warsaw, Poland for this tutorial on how to make this animated map. All right, I'm gonna show you how we can do this inside Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, so we need an image. We need a line with dashes on it. And uh, I also threw in a little aircraft hovering across the ground. Not, not a lot of extra work, but uh, and it does make a cool effect. So the best place to start for all of that really is Photoshop. Um, we're going to draw the path and then animate everything in Premiere Pro. Normally you can do this in After Effects and I will have another tutorial on do how to do this in After Effects. But if you want to learn how to do this in uh, Premiere Pro, like Lokash uh, asked me, this is the way to do it. So let's have a look at this multi-layered file. So let's go look at all the layers. First of all, the bottom is the map and I have a start and a finish and these are just shapes. So if you go to the shape, custom shape uh, in Photoshop and click on these shapes, you can turn on all these shapes and I just grabbed a couple of stars and the aircraft, actually, this was a, uh, a 3D object that I imported uh, in from the web. It's not 3D anymore. I just needed a, a flat vertical view of that. Okay, now what about the line? So the line, let me turn back, everything back on. The line is a dashed line, and it's actually a path. So to draw something like this, the best thing to do is to start with your pen tool. And just a regular pen tool, We've got no fill, red stroke, and over here to the right, there are different dashes. And if you go to more options, you can actually make your own dashes. I'm using this preset of four plus two, and we're making a new layer when we uh, draw this. So if you click and start drawing this, and when you're done, just uh, finish that path. Uh, you can also tap escape. You now have this dashed line. So that's how I made that line there. I, I left all of this as separate layers inside Photoshop because it will help us work with this file a little bit better. So that's the Photoshop work. Let's jump over to Adobe Premiere Pro and look at how we put this together. So here is the map animation. And you bring in the Photoshop file just as you normally would. This is one of the things that uh, is okay to bring in with the import menu, or you can actually double click in a blank area in the project window. And there's my map. It's a .psd file, so it's saved as a layered Photoshop file. And when you import a Photoshop file, you have the options of how to bring this in. And typically, people will be bringing them in as merged layers, but we're gonna create a sequence and when you create a sequence, you have two options down at the bottom. I'm gonna give you a link here on the two differences here, document size, layer size, and why, they're, uh, why would you want one and not the other. I'm gonna leave it on document size, and you can see all the layers there. It's important to name your layers uh, so we can work on them a little easier. Click OK, and you get a new uh, bin and if we open up that bin, there's a sequence, because that's what we made, and there's the Photoshop file with all of its different pieces. If we double click on this, and we look at it, there's no animation. It is just simply each one of the individual layers. So there's our map layer. There's the star, there's the finish star. There's our line, and there's the aircraft. Oh yeah, one thing I wanted to show you uh, back in Photoshop is with the with the aircraft you'll notice in the aircraft you'll notice that it has a drop shadow and that's a typical drop shadow effect so if you click on the bottom with that layer selected and choose drop shadow you're creating a layer style and you may not know this but if you drag the mouse outside of this area you don't have to know the number you can just move that around it just helps to give this the feeling that the aircraft is flying above the map all right and we get that same effect here we zoom in to you 
you can see there's the drop shadow for that. So to make this work, we're going to take the line. So there's our line layer. And in our effects control panels, we'll twirl down opacity and we'll draw a free draw Bezier mask. And I'll zoom in in a second, but basically we only need four points for this mask. Okay, so let's zoom in to that area. And what we're going to be animating is this mask. And as the mask moves, it reveals part of that stroke. So at the very beginning, with our mask, we click on this stopwatch and we've created our first animation point. Move this ahead, however fast you want this animation to go, and drag this out. And this is the, the hardest part is, let me zoom out a little bit more so we've got um, more showing. After I have my first keyframe uh, drawn by clicking on the stopwatch, the second one draws automatically as soon as I touch this mask and drag it out. Okay, so I follow this down. The speed of this really is dependent on how fast you want this to go. And you can move the keyframes later on and, and make this faster or slower. And it doesn't matter how wide I'm making this. In fact, I should make this wider because if you look up in the top, I might start cutting this out. So I can actually drag the top one over to here now too. So let's zoom out. And if we go back, we can see there's our mask moving around. So let's add a few more points for a few more keyframes. There it is. There it is. And now that is our path. Let's have a look at that. So there's our path animating along. A little bit fast. I would have done it slower, but uh, I just wanted to show you how we do that. Next, to make the aircraft follow along, I'm going to click on the aircraft layer and twirl down motion, and I'm going to set a keyframe for position and rotation. And again, let's zoom in so we can find our aircraft a little bit easier. Obviously, if you have a large screen, you're going to be able to do this a little bit easier. Let's move ahead a little bit. And you can either click on this layer and drag it. You have to actually double click. Um, or you can move this around in here. And what I'm going to try to do is keep the plane hiding the bottom. So there's the plane. Move ahead a little bit more. Move the plane over a little bit. And now you'll notice the rotation is off. So I'm going to have to rotate by clicking here and... Oh, and then we see what's wrong. Well, why is it doing that? Why isn't it rotating on itself? Well, every single thing you bring in from, uh, or any, any object you actually have on a layer has an anchor point, a center point. Remember I told you there was two different ways to bring this in. One way was to bring it in with the anchor point in the center of the um, uh, aircraft. The problem is it would put everything in the middle. It would lose the positioning that we had. So the first thing you have to do is we'll reset this. We'll get rid of all of our keyframes. Reset everything back to the beginning. And if you turn everything else off and click on motion, that center point there, that's the anchor point for the plane because we're using the document size. So you'll notice when I mouse over, the arrow changes to move the anchor point. So what we really have to do is start before we even add any points, we need to make sure 
that the anchor point is about the center. So we're going to rotate this around the middle of the, the uh, fuselage area in there. Now watch what happens when I rotate. Ah, it's rotating all over there. If we actually zoom out and look at it, that's what you're rotating the whole layer. Okay, so let's leave that at zero. And if we wanted to, we could just leave the, um, the line on. So let's add a position and rotation keyframe. Move ahead. Uh, like I said, you could click in this area here, double click on it or move it, or change those numbers. I just find sometimes something so small and tedious that sometimes it's easier just to scrub these numbers over here. Okay, so now we're going from there to there. Let's go over to here and rotate this guy a little bit. There he goes. And we'll keep going and following this down manually. And that really is the only way uh, we can do this. There's no auto orient along a path like we have in After Effects. So this is the kind of thing you're doing. You're drawing that and following it along. And if we go back to my original here, and if we click on the mask, you can see there's the mask that I drew. back a little bit bigger. You can see there's the mask. And when we click on the plane, there it is. You can see there's all my keyframes for position and rotation as he follows it along. And you can really see how that drop shadow really helps to differentiate on the height of that. All right. So that is the mask, that is the overall animation. And when I brought this in, this is a very large um, uh, image. It's, uh, you know, thousands of pixels wide. So once you have your map animated and this sequence is animated, create a new sequence. And this is my 1920-1080. It can be 4K if you want or 8K, but uh, you basically take your map sequence that you you animate it and you drag the sequence into the sequence and you keep the existing settings and you'll notice that your map is too large so we're going to scale this map till it fills this move the height down a bit here set a position and scale keyframe and what I'm going to do is now scale this in and follow that around. So now we're zooming in on the plane. So that was my original map animation here. And if we click and look, can see the keyframes and I selected those keyframes right click and chose Bezier just so that they're a little bit more um, organic and easy to follow so there we go there's our animated plane um, going across this map from one side to another and uh, if you wanted to uh, change the aircraft select the aircraft and option or alt drag a new aircraft on top of that or uh, Some kind of flying dragon or whatever and you could easily replace that and keep all of the animation All right, I was a huge fan growing up of Johnny Weissmuller He's the only Tarzan uh, and they would show a map and they would show a dotted line with a plane I've always loved that and, and you can see that in you know Raiders of the Lost Ark and stuff like that I've always been a fan. Thanks so much to Lokish uh, for this. Um, I really do appreciate it Next week I'll show you an After Effects version of this that makes it so much easier Including not having to draw the paths copying and pasting and everything is drawn for you
All right. Well, hopefully you found this informative and fun. I really love doing this kind of stuff. And hey, I really support, I really love all the support that, you, that you've given us here at Video Revealed. If you're new to Video Revealed, please take a moment and subscribe. If you're already using Video Revealed and you know the, the wonderful advantage you get of getting an inside peek into Adobe applications, take a moment and support us on Patreon. Hey, my wife's the CFO of our two-person company and uh, she's really on me, so please help me. All you have to give me is a dollar a month, 12 bucks a year, come on. Uh, help us here to keep Video Revealed going on and uh, support us so that we can make some great tutorials. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith and it's my job to get you and your maps looking their best.